Rub up your engines! Okay, the 370Zs, probably the last really good Z car. They're having a hard time getting rid of their new designs, kind of a failure, but this was before that, and they're pretty good cars. But this one's making a noise. Take a listen. Now, it only happens when it's warmed up, and it's warmed up now. Now, this is pretty much normal noise for 100,000 miles on one of these, but you never know what's going to go on. So we'll hook my computer up. And the first thing I notice, he's got one of these Bluetooth machines plugged in. Don't do that. That's called an OBD port for good reasons. You plug it into diagnosis system. You don't really want to be driving around with the thing on. Cars aren't made for diagnostic systems to be operating the whole time plugged in. You really don't want to do that. For road test, yeah, okay. But not driving around all the time with it plugged in. Then while it's reading everything, We'll look around here. They're nice little sports cars, you know? Sports cars aren't as popular as they used to be, but they got a nice hatch in the back, real comfy seats, and of course, a screaming standard transmission with six speeds. How's it off? 370Z, 2012. Let's diagnose and we'll rev it up a little. Sounds good. Got a nice heads up display. And what's in front of you? The tachometer. It's the driver's car. Standard transmission. You want us to do the RPMs. That's how you drive. The speedometer over here. You can see how fast you're going, but you're mainly interested in the RPMs if you're a serious driver. And this is a serious driver's car. It's got a big six cylinder engine in the front, six speed standard tranny, and it's rear wheel drive. Kids love these things for drifting, of course. Now it's finally 100% done as we look through. The faults are ABS, HVAC, have nothing to do with the running, just for giggles, we'll look at them. ABS code, battery voltage normal, abnormal, that's pretty typical on these things. Somebody changed the battery, they didn't reset anything, so we'll just erase that. And of course, to erase it, gotta turn it off, just turn the idiot lights on. And there we go. The other code is the HVAC system. Probably another squirrely code. We'll see what that is. And up it pops. It's just another squirrely battery communication code. So we'll erase that too. And while we're waiting, we put this cool Android in here. Check it out. It's got some nice screen savers on it. Look, we're in the jungle. Look, now we're looking at spices. Now it doesn't have any codes. We're gonna look at live data, see what kind of shape it's in. So we're hooking it back into live data, all signals, and we'll see what kind of shape this baby's in. So far everything's good, it's all black. Now they got 30 miles a gallon on the highway coming here, so yeah, that's pretty good. And he says he gets 22 all around driving. Herbal valve timing's working fine. See, look what it's doing. It's subtracting three one hundredths from bank two and seven one hundredths from bank one. Now we'll go further down. Well, spot on. Now the engine noise is pretty normal, but if you're ever curious, these are pretty much race design engines, and look what it says. If a valve clearance on the intake side is out of specs, replace the VVEL ladder assembly and cylinder head assembly. That's because the way these babies are made, they're built and they're lined board. Machine bores them, and that's how it's set up. You can't adjust them. You gotta replace the cylinder head and the pieces on top of it. So, you get a little noise in one of these, my advice is you live with it. That's totally normal. You can't even hear it inside the car. But, they race design engines. <laughs> replace the cylinder head. You know, it costs you thousands and thousands of dollars, so. But normally, they'll actually run quite some time. I've seen them clacking a lot louder than this, and they're still going okay. Realize, this isn't something you get in there with a feeler gauge and a couple wrenches and adjust them. No, it doesn't work that way. Now, these things are a riot to drive. They're a lot of fun. It's a two-seater. They don't sell many two-seaters anymore, but it harkens back to the old days of two-seaters. These things came all all the way from the old 200 series Nissans, and they are fun cars to drive. It's just that people really don't buy two-seaters anymore, and their new one that they touted was gonna be a scream all over the place. They're having a hard time selling them because they didn't come out all that well. So let's take a little drag race here. Even though it's rainy, this does have traction control. Here we come to our little spots. Really fun to drive in the curves. These are a driver's car. There's no arguing that. Nobody's behind us. So. Ready, set. Well, it's raining all right. This thing is fun to drive. And as you can tell, it's got a muffler to lead. This thing's in immaculate shape. A lot of fun to drive. 
would have been even more fun if it was dry, but eh, you can't have everything. <laughs> now realize, this is a naturally aspirated poured fuel injected vehicles. The new ones that they came out with, the turbocharged, it's a different driving experience. If you have this much fun driving around on one of these things, why would you want a turbocharger? Why would you want a different fuel injection system with higher pressure? That's going to break and have problems. These things are tried and true. Look at this thing. It's got 101,000 miles on it, and it still runs like a clock. And it's on its original clutch, too. Granted, the previous owner was an older man like me. It wasn't a young kid. It wasn't wrapped around a tree, either. Smooth riding vehicle. Yeah, it's loud because it's got a muffler delete button. Not like those crappers you see all over the place. The computer showed no misfires. And why? Because it's made in Japan. And if you ever get confused, look at the VIN. J means it's made in Japan. Really fun, zippy sports cars. But... Again, he did get lucky because the previous owner was an old guy. If some kid would have driven this, it'd probably be in a junkyard bent in half, or the engine would be gone, or the transmission bearings would be shot, and it'd be whining away like mad. But this thing is pretty much the same as it was from the showroom floor. It's still tracked like a dream. Ran, no backfires, even with a muffler delete. These are fun cars. Now, the new one, like I say, it's pretty much been a financial failure. People really aren't buying them. They didn't have the extra performance performance they thought they're gonna have with it because there's a big deal of difference having a naturally aspirated engine and a turbocharged GDI engine that's gonna wear out faster yeah it's gonna have a little bit more power but really the problem was the new ones aren't as fast as they claimed they were gonna be hey you don't need anything faster than this it lasted 100,000 miles and still runs like a top that's how Nissan sold these Z cars from the early 200s all the way to this thing they kept perfecting them better and better and better. It's just that sports cars aren't that popular anymore. Two-seaters are not big sellers anymore. You can find one like this from an old man. <laughs> hey, it can be a really fun thing to drive around in. And this guy works at a Nissan dealership. <laughs> so he had a lot to pick through. The ones that came through, he picked out the best one and he bought it. Yeah, these were great cars. There's no arguing that. Why didn't they sell that many of them? Because they're sports cars, two-seaters. People don't buy that much stuff anymore. But if you're looking for one like this, a model like this, especially this year, one of the best ones they ever made, hey, you find one in this kind of shape, go ahead and buy it. Because as long as you don't wrap it around a tree, believe you me, they hold their value. You're not going to lose money in the deal. This thing's already depreciated. Probably anything that's going to depreciate for what he paid for, if he got sick of it, he could probably make five grand selling it as is now. As long as you take care of it, don't wrap it around a tree. So that shuts the case on a 370Z. Why, maybe you wouldn't buy one of their new super expensive ones. They said the first one they got, some guy paid a hundred some grand for it because he wanted to be the first one on his block to have something. Well, let some fool pay a hundred grand for it. Then buy it when it's a few years old. Though, I don't think I'd buy the new one when it's many years old because it's got turbochargers, GDI injection. All that stuff's going to wear out a lot faster. These, they've shown the test of time and they're still rolling down the road. And here's some bonus questions and answers. T Luke 157 says, I accidentally ran over a divider in the middle of the road. There's no damage to the car as far as I can tell. It runs smooth. Everything checks out. Should I take it a professional just to get it checked out in case it was damaged? Well, yes, but here's a big caveat. Only if you know an honest one. A lot of mechanics, they'll sell you anything. They don't care. They're out to make money. Ah, oh, the subframe bolt's bent. Oh, we got to re weld, blah, 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 right? If you have a trusted mechanic, definitely take it there. Have them put it up on a lift grab the wheels make sure there's no play make sure nothing's bent but if you find you're going down the highway highway speeds it's not shaking or pulling or making noises it tracks good and you know get any shaking it's probably perfectly fine you know? but you might as well if you got a trusted mechanic because he can look and say look there's a little ding in the oil pan it's starting to leak so you'd want to replace it now before it does some kind of damage so yeah but only if you have a trusted mechanic because if you don't know anybody and you take it in guys are always going to try to sell you stuff i see that all all the time. And I mean, it's not like things have changed. Back in the day, in the 1960s, when I was a kid working at my father's corner gas station in Lewiston, New York, right? My grandfather, back then, he was one of the only honest mechanics out. Even then, people were screwing people over left, right, and center. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.